Hey AP Chemsters, this is Mrs. Vandewoy uh, bringing you another edition of the Blank Wall Series. Today we're talking about 15.8 acid-base properties of ions and salts. Before I begin, let me just remind you a couple things here. If you need to pause this, please do. We're going to do some problems in this section, so pause it, try them on your own. If I pause, I'm, I'm asking you to think here, so if I give you a little bit of a space there, a little bit of a uh, quiet time in, in this video that means you should be thinking of the answers before I give it to you. As always, jot down any kind of questions you might have so that Mrs. Blankenship and I could answer them. Uh, just get in mind of, of how to effectively use these flipped classrooms, okay? So here we are, we're starting off on 15.8 and like I said, acid properties of ions and salts. So if I am talking to you about salts, what, what does this conjure up? Hopefully you are thinking, oh, that's the stuff I put on my french fries from uh, Steak and Shake. And you are right, sodium chloride is a salt. So you might be wondering, well, if you're bringing this up, is my salt on my french fries, is it an acid, is it base, or is it neutral? And that's a great question, it's something you ought to think about. So what is a salt? A salt is a product of an acid-based reaction. So in the case of sodium chloride, it is the result of the reaction of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. And there has been an age-old question that's been around even when I was in high school, and you know how long ago that was, uh, where you know certain chemistry teachers back in those days would say, I bet I could put some hydrochloric acid and some uh, sodium hydroxide together and I can drink the result. And so I even went on, on the internet and I found even this question here. Uh, is it safe to drink a mixture of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid? And it says, since the reaction yields sodium chloride and water, water is neutral, and I, I think sodium chloride is because I put it on my french fries every day, uh, would it be possible to find out the exact amount you need using limited reactants and drink the final product? This is hypothetical, obviously. And I would like to caution you, don't try this at home, whatever you do. Uh, don't try this in the lab, whatever you do. Don't ask Mrs. Blankenship or I to do this because we won't. It's stupid, it's dumb, don't do it. But hypothetically, could you? That's the great question. And if you scroll down, you can see where people have answered. And some retired chem teacher, maybe that was mine, I don't know, uh, has even done it for their chem students. They don't recommend it for sure. They're saying if you do it well, if you are really careful, this guy puts a little uh, phenolphthalein in, uh, which is actually gives Pepmobismol its color, so, you know, whatever. Uh, so it says, hypothetically, yes. If you look, scroll down, you'll see everyone saying, yes, you can. That's kind of scary, isn't it? So why is it that you could, but don't, drink this stuff? Because sodium chloride must be neutral. Water is neutral, and sodium chloride is neutral. Well, what about all these other salts out there? Think of all the salts that you have come across, all right? We have silver nitrate, we have potassium iodide, we have, I don't know, iron three chloride, we have sodium bicarbonate, all of those, um, really, those ionic compounds that we've ever used could technically be a salt. Are they all neutral too? Great question. We're gonna answer that in today's section. So let's go back to our notes. The intro says, all right, here's my bicarbonate ion and water. Uh, is in equilibrium with hydrochloric, I'm sorry, wrong one, carbonic acid and sodium hydroxide. So we're supposed to identify each species. I don't mean to name them, but, but what are they in solution? Let's take a look at the bicarbonate. Where is its partner on the other side? I think it's carbonic acid. How did sodium, or how did bicarbonate become carbonic acid? If you said a gain in H+, plus, you are correct. Gainers are winners, as in O kills baseball, as in OHs are bases. Yeah, this is a base, okay? Uh, so I'll put a little B here for it stands for base. It accepted, it gained in H+. Plus. Well, how did water become hydroxide? If you said it lost an H+, plus, you are correct. And what's the definition of a loser? It is an acid. Acids are losers, okay? Uh, what about carbonic acid? Well, hopefully this is a duh. If I said carbonic acid, it must be an acid. And it is because it's what was you know, produced after the base gained the H+. And hopefully you recognize uh, hydroxide as a base, and it is a conjugate base of water when water acts like an acid. So I've identified each of my species. So what is this telling me? Take a look at this. It's telling me that these ions can act as bases. 
Could this ion also act like an acid? Yes, it could. It depends on what it's with, okay? But there's an H to give off, and it could act as an acid. Other ions can act as acids as well. So ions can be bases and acids as well. And that's getting us closer and closer to the question of what's an ionic substance in water going to be. If I can identify each of the parts as in sodium and chloride, then together I will know if it's an acid base or is it neutral. So let's keep going. Ions do not exist as ions, but as an ionic compound. So like I said, here's this bicarbonate. Well, where'd it come from? From the sodium bicarbonate, which we also know as baking soda. So what happens if I put some baking soda in some water, the uh, sodium bicarbonate is going to dissociate into its sodium ions and bicarbonate ion. And we already know that bicarbonate right here acts as a base. So the question is, well, what does sodium do? Does sodium act like an acid and neutralize the bicarbonate so this whole thing is neutral? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. It says right here, salts that produce neutral solutions. Salts that consist of cat ions, those are your positive ions, a strong bases, and the anions of a strong acid. Anions, of course, are your negative ions. So these cations are strong bases, anions are strong acids. Read this, look at this, underline this, have no effect on pH, which of course we're looking at the hydrogen ion concentration when dissolved in water. So what's a strong base? Well, if you recall our discussion on bases, we're talking about your group one um, metals with hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, those folks. Um, we also mentioned those group two, or group two metals with hydroxide, the calcium hydroxide. But what's the problem with calcium and magnesium and, and all those uh, hydroxides? They don't dissolve in water. So if they don't dissolve in water, they're not going to produce a hydroxide each time. So that's why we did not include the group two metals in our list. So we're really only looking at sodium ions and potassium ions, okay? What are your strong acids? I sure hope you know your six strong acids. Why don't you take a, a few seconds out and recite them in your head? Did you get them all? All right, let's see if you got them. So there's hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic. Remember, not hydrofluoric. Uh, what are the other three? Let's see here. Uh, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and perchloric acid. So those are your six strong acids. So guess what? Those anions, chloride, bromide, iodide, nitrate, uh, bisulfate, and uh, perchlorate are your anions of the strong acids. So what does that mean? Those six anions go back here, have no effect on pH. So if you have a salt that is produced from either sodium or potassium or one of those six, you might want to add those four that are not on your list, then that salt produces a neutral solution, as in sodium chloride. So would it be safe to drink, possibly, theoretically, hypothetically, um, a sodium hydroxide combined with hydrochloric acid mixture because my sodium chloride is neutral? Yes. What about my potassium hydroxide and uh, nitric acid? Uh, yes. Again, don't do it, but it is possible because the resulting salt is uh, neutral. So let's check this out. Which of the following substances, when dissolved in water, are neutral? You go ahead and work on this, pause this, and see what you come up with. All right, well, let's check this out. Uh, here is sodium nitrate. Sodium comes from here. Nitrate is the anion of a strong acid. So if you got both of those, bingo, it's neutral. Barium chloride, remember barium, barium is a group two metal, all right? Barium hydroxide, in a sense, could be a strong base, but hey, it doesn't dissolve, doesn't count here. All right, silver iodide, is silver a group one metal? No, it's not even a group two metal, that doesn't count. Iodide does, but silver does not, it's going to do something else. How about potassium perchlorate? Does potassium come from up here? There it is. Is perchlorate a anion, an anion of a uh, strong acid? Yes, it is. So you have both requirements. So uh, number four here is also a neutral salt. And number five here, that's kind of a dumb one. It's hydrochloric acid. That doesn't count anyway, does it? So it looks like uh, answers one and four, which is letter D, would be the right answer. I hope you got that. Let's go ahead and turn to the next page. 
So let's look at this idea of anions of weak bases. We just looked at the bicarbonate ion. What about the others? So the anions can, notice it's in bold, can be conjugate bases of an acid. So what does that mean? Here is my anion and I put an acid in there. It could be water, you know, and it's in equilibrium with its weak acid, okay? So anions that are conjugate bases of strong acids are neutral as we've just learned. Well, why is that? Because what kind of an arrow does a strong acid have? Here's our example, HCl. Oh, it's a single arrow. That's right. It goes to H plus plus Cl minus. What does that mean? We think back to the equilibrium chapter we just finished. What direction does it go? Only in the forward direction. Does this chloride turn around, grab an H plus, and make HCl? The answer is no. Can this act like a base? It doesn't go this direction. It cannot. So anions of conjugate bases, strong acids, are neutral. It does not act like a base. It is not going to go in the reverse reaction. That's why that's the case. Anions that are conjugate bases of weak acids are weak bases. What does this mean? See that double arrow? That means that this F minus can grab an H plus from water to make the HF. And then also the reverse reaction is also true if you want to know that one. So why is F minus a weak base? So it says consider HF as an acid. So I'm flipping this reaction around. Here is HF in the uh, reaction with the hydroxide. Does it go ahead and make the F minus and H2O uh, liquid? And the answer is yes. And look at the Ka. That's a small number. That's much, much, much less than one. Okay, so what does that mean? That I'm going to produce more of the reactants than the products. Well, why is that? Because the F minus can grab an H plus and drive it back to the reactant side. And it says if K is much less than one, then equilibrium lies far to the left, so the HF bond must be strong enough. Why? Because F minus has the affinity for the hydrogen ion. So fluoride is added to water. Its affinity for the H plus right here from the H plus in water will remove the H ions from the water. So in this manner, it acts like a base. All right, not 100%, but still enough. So here is a, a chart from your book that really talks about the acid strength. Here is your really, really super de duper weak acids to your very, very strong ones. I only gave you the four, although there are six. All right, and then notice that it's partners in a sense. Look at these uh, the three. Actually, they only gave you three of the strong acids. I just saw that. These are your neutral, but look at most of your weak acids make your weak conjugate bases and vice versa. And then these negligible ones make your strong bases. All right, so there's quite an overlook. Weak acids make weak conjugate bases and vice versa. Okay, so it says classify each ion as a weak base or pH neutral. Now, try it without looking at the chart, and then look at the chart. I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, so 37A, I would say this is neutral. Why? Because I recognize this as the anion of one of the six strong acids. And if you look up there, there is nitrate anyway. So it is going to be a pH neutral um, ion. Well, nitrite, it's, what, what, what's its conjugate acid? Is it strong or is it weak? Hopefully you know it's a weak uh, conjugate acid, so this ion is a weak base. What about this one? Uh, well, its conjugate acid is a weak acid. That's acetic acid. Oh, by the way, this is nitrous acid, if you forgot. And so weak, uh, uh, or sorry, weak acetic acid um, would make this a weak base, and so it would be um, basic, okay? As long as you don't have a, a neutral... Uh, anion, you're going to have a, a basic ion here, okay? So let's check out this next question. So this section is now, all right, now that we know that these uh, anions can act as weak bases, unless they're part of the big six, uh, what is going to be the pH? How do I go about solving this? we got to do a couple things first. So here's a generic HA um, acid, I put it in water, and you see how it dissociates. Why don't you write out the Ka? Pause this, write it out, and see how you do. Okay, well, hopefully you got this. Shouldn't be any uh, big surprises. All right, what if I put this anion in water? 
What's the KB? Wait a minute, what's this KB? Oh yeah, from the last chapter, we said that if this acts as a base, I'm going to use KB. Make sure you're aware of that. So what's KB here? Go ahead and write it out. I hope you got that. And so what happens if I were to multiply KA by KB? Well, what do you notice? Hmm, can I cancel anything out? What's HA divided by HA? Oh, that's 1. What's A minus divided by A minus? Oh, that's equal to 1. So what am I left with? And what do you recognize that equals? KW. All right, so if I were to multiply these, these two values together, all right, that's going to get me KW. So if you'd like to set up your triangle all over again, remember your triangle? I'm going to do this, this, this. It's kind of messy. Sorry about that. What's going to go on top? KW. Here's KA. That's a K. And that's KB. And you can figure out whatever you're looking for using that idea. So if an acetic acid has a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the fifth, calculate Kb of the acid ion. So you're solving for Kb. What's Kb equal to? Kw over Kc. And what's that equal to? Plug in your numbers. Well, what's Kw? Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative uh, 14th. Well, what's KB? You gotta go look on page, oh, I think it's 705, and find the KA value for uh, acetic acid. Go ahead and do that. Pause this, check it out. Okay, hopefully you figured it out. So it's 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and if you were to divide that out, you should get 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Uh, so that's my KB. So now what? They're, they want to know what's pKa, pKb in the conclusion. Get out your calculators. All right, what's Ka? Well, it's right down here. It's 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. How do you find the pKa? I remember on another blank wall, I told you how to find pKa. How do you find the p of anything? You take the negative log of that. So what's the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth? Pauses do it you should have gotten 4.74. What about the KB? This is the KB. Go ahead and solve for the PKB. Hopefully you got this. Now, what's my conclusion? Do you recognize anything about the sum of these two numbers? Go ahead and add them together. What do you get? Hopefully you got that right. And so what's our conclusion? Well, what's pKa plus pKb going to equal? Oops, uh, 14. Uh, if you get out your equation sheet and you go to the side that says equilibrium, all this stuff is written down. You don't have to memorize. It's good if you do, don't get me wrong. But all this I just showed you is on that equation sheet. It shows you Kw equals 1 times 7 negative 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. We talked about that earlier too. And therefore at 25 degrees Celsius, Kw equals Ka times Kb. PKA plus PKB equals 14. I hope no one's shocked at why it's 14. That is your exponent of Kw. Okay, so let's do some real problems now. I know you're excited. Let's go ahead and do the next question, all right? So I want you to uh, turn the page. All right, so here it is. Find the pH of a 0.0 or 0 0.100 molar of, what the heck is that? Well, it's sodium formate solution, okay? Well, what's the first thing we have to consider? What if I put sodium formate into solution? I'll just kind of put that right here. So here's my solid sodium formate. It's an equilibrium of sodium ion and the formate ion. And what did we say already about sodium ions? Is it going to affect the pH of the solution? Yes or no? Hopefully you said no, and that's the right answer. So what about formate? Will that affect the pH of this solution? The answer is yes. So what is your first step? Well, put formate into a water solution. And notice it's a negative ion 
it's going to grab that H plus from the uh, water and it's going to make the weak acid, the formic acid, and sodium hydroxide. And notice what we do next. We're going to set up an ice table. So what's my initial conditions? Well, the problem says I have 0 0.100 molar. How many sig figs is that? Three. All right, keep that in mind. And I don't start off with any of the formic acid or the hydroxide. Um, what's Q? Oh, yeah, Q. That's from equilibrium. Q is zero. What does it mean? How will it shift? To the right. So let's shift this to the right. There we go. And so here's my line. And what am I going to make when it's all said and done? There we go. All right, so I think I am ready to start solving this problem. So let's start this off. Hey, what is this? Is this an acid or a base? It's a base, good. So I need to uh, solve for KB. And that's equal to my products over my reactants. And okay, so I can do this. And no, I can't do this. Why can't I do this? Do I know KB? No, I don't. I got to solve for KB. Holy cow, I got to solve for KB. So what's KB equal to? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, here we go. KB. Hang on, did I give you the wrong one? Nope, I did not give you the wrong one. Phew, all right. Um, what is K, uh, KA really? Well, Ka of formic acid from page 705 is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. So once you take your Kw, again, we're assuming it's at 25 degrees Celsius, divided by 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth, and so I get 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11th. So guess what that is? That's your Kb. So I can keep solving the problem next, okay? So, oh, thank goodness, uh, x squared over 0.100. What happened to my minus x? Well, look at your KB. Ich bin sehr froh. Yeah, that means for you folks, I am so happy. Why am I so happy? Look at the number. Can I assume that my x is going to be really, really, really small? And I should go back and check it when I'm done? Yes, it does. All right. So because this is such a ridiculously small number, I'm going to assume that I can just drop the negative x. All right, so let's go ahead and solve for the rest of this. X squared um, is going to equal, I'm going to multiply both sides by 0.1. I'm going to kind of go up here because I need the room. Uh, 5.6 times 10 to the negative 12th. Uh, what do you think I ought to do at this point? Yeah, I think I should take the square root. And look what I wrote. Keep in mind, what's X? X is not the hydrogen ion concentration. It's not hydronium. X is hydroxide. And that's equal to 2.6 times, or 2.36 times 10 to the negative 6. Why 2.36? How many sig figs does this have? Oh, three. So I need three sig figs here. So what do you think I'm going to do now? They want pH. You can do one of two things. You can either find pOH or you can find hydrogen ion concentration. Me, personally, I think it's a whole lot easier finding pOH, but you do what you want. Um, I plugged in my negative log into my calculator. So there is pH. I'm sorry, pOH. And here is P. How did I get that? I subtracted from 14. Okay. So what does this mean? That means my sodium formate in solution is basic. So it's very different from sodium chloride. Sodium chloride in solution is neutral. Sodium formate is basic. Okay. Go ahead and why don't you pause this for a while and do problem number 39. You might have to go to page 705 uh, or go to the page before this to find your Ka of acetic acid. Pause this and see how you do. So let's find the pH of point. So let's try this again. Find the pH of 0.250 molar of sodium acetate solution. 
The first thing I think of is sodium acetate is dissolved in water. Get Na plus and acetate. What do you recognize about Na plus? It is the cation of a strong base. It will not affect pH, so I can ignore it. However, this is an anion of a weak acid, not of a strong acid, but of a weak acid. So I do have to consider how acetate will react in water. So go ahead, and I sure hope you've done this, write your equation down for uh, the acetate ion in water. Well, there it is, all right, acetate in water. This is gonna act like a base to make your weak acid, uh, acetic acid, and your hydroxide. So now what? Um, what is my initial concentrations? And what's X? Oh yeah, X is, oops, sorry about that, is, um, is I'm sorry, X was Q. Q is zero. So it's going to shift to the right. So what will I get? And so I'm going to shift it to the right. So I'm going to subtract X and gain X. All right, here's my little bar here. And now what? I need to come up with uh, what is my equilibrium. So there's my equilibrium. And now I need to set up my equation. Why is it KB? Because this is a what? It's a base. So if this is your base, then I need a KB. All right, I got my, whoops, wrong one. Sorry about that. Um, let's try to find the right one. Here it is. So here's my KB, here's my weak uh, acetic acid and hydroxide over the acetate. And I'll, I'm all set to go. This is equal to X squared 0.250. I have a problem. I don't know what this is equal to. So what did you have to do? Go look up on page 705 and what is your Ka value? Notice it's a lot like that formic acid one, but this time uh, for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So when you do this, you should get equal here. Uh, folks, we did that on the prior page, okay? And now we need to multiply both sides by 0.250. I'll just stick this up here. Now I need to take the square root of it, which I did right here. But again, what's X? Go back. X is hydroxide, not the hydronium, not H+, plus. it's hydroxide. So what do you think my next step is going to be? I'm going to find the pOH, and there's my pH. I subtracted from 14, I got 9.07. So once again, is the sodium acetate, is it a acidic salt, is it a basic salt, is it a neutral salt? Well, look at the number here, and hopefully you said, oh, it's a basic salt. How did I know that? Because sodium is neutral, and this is going to act as a base. So let's check out cations as weak acid. So how do I get um, a weak acid from here? Well, cations that counter ions of strong bases are neutral. So, for example, your sodium. Uh, what's another one that you should write down here? Hopefully you know it's potassium. So what's going to be a cat? ion that are conjugate acid weak bases. So this is my generic formula for that. B stands for base. Uh, and I need to make it an H plus form of that. Put it in water. What's going to happen? Uh, the water is going to accept the H plus from your, your acid here, your conjugate acid in a sense. And I get my base. So a, a prime example would be your ammonia ammonium. So here is ammonia in water, making ammonium plus hydroxide. So what's Kb equal to right here? And what if I take this ammonium ion, is it ammonium chloride or ammonium nitrate? Very, very common compounds. And I stick that in water. Well, look at this. I make H2O plus and NH3 uh, ammonia. And so your, your Ka would be over here. Just real quick, what would happen if you were to multiply these two together? I bet you'd notice that your NH4 pluses cancel out and your NH3s cancel out and you get KW all over again. That's not too bad. So again, we are looking for positive ions of a weak base, okay? That would give us an acidic solution. Uh, I got a Ka value for ammonium, so we're all set. And we have one more category that would give us an acid. Salts that produce a highly charged metallic ion, such as aluminum. Aluminum plus three. Okay, aluminum and ion and water is what we call hydrated, and you have six waters attaching itself to the aluminum three plus ion. The rule of thumb for a hydrate, by the way, is take the charge 
I'll multiply it by, by two, and, and that's your six H2O. That's a rule of thumb. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but it's a good guideline. So a highly metallic charge will polarize this uh, the OH bond in water. So this positive three, that, that's a, a fairly strong positive charge. It's going to attract the uh, oxygen and the OH bond in water, and it's going to draw it to the, uh, the metallic ion. So the hydrogen in the water then becomes acidic, okay? Let's turn the page. And we have the last one. So for example, dissolving aluminum chloride in water. Here is my aluminum ion. Uh, remember, why are, where's chloride? Chloride is neutral. It is the anion of a strong acid. So it doesn't count. We don't worry about chloride in water. But we do worry about aluminum. So here's the aluminum attracting all those waters to it. And what will happen then to one of those H's because that bond is getting weaker and weaker with the more polarized, uh, o the, the, the polar, the, ah, I can't think of the electronegative oxygen there, that bond's getting weaker and that H is able to fall off. So it says classify H as a weak acid or pH neutral. Well, let's look at A. Um, Wow, I don't really recognize that as anything in particular, but let's check back in our note. Page 23, hopefully you recognize this. So this is uh, where some of that came from. I think we had the uh, pyridine ion, if I remember that problem right. And so what is its uh, conjugate base in a sense? It's a weak base. So if this is a weak base, this is going to be weakly acidic uh, as an ion. So let's go back to where we were. So again, this will be an acidic ion here. Uh, calcium plus two, um, no, it is not a, a really highly charged ion. It's a plus two, but not bad. It's also the ion of a potentially strong base, okay? So I would call that neutral. But here's your chromium ion. Your chromium is a plus three, uh, a fairly high charge there. It's gonna act just like aluminum did. It'll be an acidic ion. As far as problem 41 goes, we're going to do this in class as a lab. So I'm going to quit right here. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you. I uh, took good notes, wrote down some questions, and we will see you later. Have a good day.